Abraham. We are, we are so happy to welcome our guest speaker today, uh, Pastor K.P. Matthew from uh, Los Angeles. He is a senior pastor of uh, uh, Indian Pentecostal Church of God and has, in, has been uh, ministering in many churches in India and in the uh, uh, United States of America uh, for many uh, past years. And also, uh, he's a teacher. Uh, he's a teacher in uh, many Bible seminaries in India. And currently, he is the, uh, the senior pastor of uh, IPC uh, Hebron Church, uh, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I know uh, some of our families are familiar with uh, our dear pastor and their family, especially our dear uh, uh, Reggie brother and family. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a great privilege for us to have Pastor, I mean, Kepi Matthew with us. And uh, moreover, uh, his wife, uh, uh, is the cousin of praise, and uh, we are so happy to uh, have dear pastor with us this morning to listen to the word of God. Actually, uh, they had their church service uh, morning, and uh, after that, only they are uh, attending uh, in, in, in this service and sharing the word of God. Anyway, uh, let us all I mean, sit in the prayer uh, and presence of God with a prayerful attitude. So, uh, the Lord's I mean, presence and Lord's I mean, spirit will speak to us, everyone, this morning. Uh, let us all put our hands together. And welcome, Pastor Kepi Matthew, uh, in our midst this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> I greet you all in the precious and sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm grateful to Dear Pastor Sam and the family, praise and children, and the church members over there for extending this invitation to join you in worship service. And back from the church, we started our worship service outdoor, but today definitely it was indoor. Uh, that was a wonderful time. And I thought of joining you at least by 11 o'clock. So I, however, I came back 10 minutes earlier. By God's grace, uh, we have the favor of the Lord throughout our life. We always trust in his loving kindness and faithfulness. I'm so happy to join this worship service, the church in Sacramento. Some of you are familiar to me, especially with the Reggie and family. And thank you all for uh, the wonderful cooperation, the contribution uh, to the church over there, and also for the expansion of the kingdom of God uh, through the church. What a joy it is to remember that we are connected with the church of God. Jesus Christ paid the precious blood on the cross of Calvary and we are delivered from the bondage of sin. I'm sure that all of you really have that joy of salvation. Love to see George and, Annie, George and Amy there. Uh, may the Lord uh, strengthen you uh, in these days, especially in this context of pandemic, uh, this COVID-19 that disturbs our minds. But we truly believe that we can overcome all challenges in the name of Jesus Christ. Very often we used to sing the chorus at the end of our prayer meetings in the past, we shall overcome, we shall overcome. Yes, definitely we shall overcome. I'm so uh, proud of saying that the Lord has enabled all of us to overcome several challenges in the past. May the Lord continue to guide us, strengthen us, empower us, that we will overcome all the challenges and we will be able to fulfill God's purpose in our life. So happy that Pastor Sam uh, and family, uh, they are here. Unfortunately, we could not meet. After they came here, we were thinking about it, planning about it to make a visit there. Uh, but we could not do it for several reasons, and also because of the COVID-19 uh, that hindered uh, for a long time. We hope that we'll be able to visit you uh, in the nearest future. We truly believe that the Lord will wipe out this virus from this earth. Praise the Lord. All those who believe with me, lift your hands up and give praise to the Lord. Those who believe that the Lord will wipe out this virus from this earth. The Lord is almighty. Praise God. I'm so sorry that my wife is not with me here to join me. Uh, she is in Austin where my son, uh, Philip is. Praise God. He's there. And 
she will be back after two days. My daughter Jitsi, uh, she is here working and she is uh, with us in uh, this place. Okay, let us continue to spend our time in God's presence uh, to meditate the word of the Lord. The word of God is established in heaven and that is in our hearts. As we read, the word of the Lord dwells in our hearts. As Apostle Paul said, let the word of God richly dwell in our hearts. You were privileged to hear the word earlier, uh, but since this is the final message for the day, I want to encourage you to open your Bible. Turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Since this is a corporate worship, we all join together in worship, no? So your cooperation is expected from the uh, preacher or from the pastor also, okay? As you do on all Sundays, uh, let me encourage one of you, please read the scripture that others also will be benefited. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. One of you, please read it loud. But, but you know God. Flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you were made you, when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful reading. But you, O oh man of God. We all are born and raised in different places, different homes. But in God's time, the Lord placed us here in California. You all are in Sacramento, we are here in Los Angeles. God has a wonderful purpose. We are the children of God. That makes us to think about our identity. This is the time many people, they're confused, they are confused regarding their identity. But there is no confusion in our life. We know who we are. Because we know God who is almighty. We know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We have fellowship with the Holy Spirit too. So when we enter into the living relationship with the living God, the loving God, we are able to recognize that we are the children of God and God has a purpose about our life. And that purpose will be ultimately fulfilled in our daily life or throughout our life. What is needed is we need to have an awareness who we are. Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy. We find here Timothy is addressed here as a man of God. Man of God. That's a masculine usage. That doesn't mean that the Bible talks only about people of a particular level. All are included, men and women, all are included in God's plan. But in that particular context, we find the scripture was written. This was the culture that has the influence. That's why we find the usage, man of God. But that includes man and woman. Look here, Timothy is addressed here as a man of God. This title was very often given to the prophets in the Old Testament and described a man who was godlike in character. What an experience it is to remember that. We are called and separated to have godlike character in our life too. Timothy was greatly gifted. We read in the scripture too. He received a gift through laying of hands by the apostles. And Timothy was a disciple of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question. Since I'm a, I have been a teacher and still I, I teach. Uh, in the online uh, seminary too. Let me ask you a question. Where do we find the beginning 
of Timothy's life in the Bible. Is it in the epistle to Timothy or any other books in the New Testament? One of you can unmute it and you can talk to me. Where do we find this name? name. Is it in Acts because of his mother and grandmother? Thank you so Thank much. You. We read in Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Look at that. Acts chapter 16 we find regarding Timothy. There we find Timothy joins Paul and Silas. There have been several missionary journeys. First missionary journey, second missionary journey, third missionary journey, and journey to Rome. All were connected with Apostle Paul. In the first missionary journey, Paul, Timothy, they had a wonderful ministry. And also we find about uh, the other ministers later. In the second missionary journey, we find Paul, Silas, they started their ministry. And Barnabas took John Mark along with him in the second journey we find Barnabas could not join. But we find in chapter 16, the, the first verse, he came to Derbe and then to Lystra where a disciple named Timothy lived. A disciple named Timothy lived. Timothy was a disciple. That was a wonderful title, you know. That is the best title. Disciple of Jesus Christ. We find the same regarding Ananias in Acts chapter 19. Ananias was a disciple in Damascus. He went in search of soul when he was in the straight seat, straight street. There he was blind. He could not move, but he was praying at the house. That's what we find in chapter 9. But there God used a disciple. But here also we find Timothy was a disciple. Let me ask you, are we disciples of Jesus Christ? Do we take proud in saying that we are the disciples of Christ? A disciple loves the Lord more than anything. We find when Jesus taught about the discipleship, a, disciple, a person has to leave behind everything and give priority to the Lord. A person, when he comes to the commitment in the deeper level, of loving Jesus more than anything of this world can become a disciple of Christ. Are we the disciples of Christ? What's our priority? What's our focus in our life? Timothy was a man who focused on Jesus Christ, eternal life, faith in the Lord. So Paul, when he was in Derbe and Lystra, we find there chapter 16, there we find in verse 3, Paul wanted to take him along on the journey. So he circumcised him because of Jews who lived in that area, for they all know that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions <clears throat> reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. So Apostle Paul urged him, desired, he longed to have Timothy in that team. Why? Because there was an incredible quality in the life of Timothy. He was greatly attracted to Paul and the team. Let me ask you, is there any attraction for others regarding our life? our confession of faith, our life, our witness, our prayer, our worship. When the others watch over us, is there something that really attracts others? That's definitely part of witnessing the Lord Jesus Christ. We, the church, is to be a worshiping community. No doubt about it. What a joy when we come together on Sunday and also other days to worship the Lord. The Lord has prepared this Zoom platform for all of us to join. Our hearts are united. Our minds get alert in giving praises to the Lord to worship God in spirit and truth. 
What a wonderful, incredible experience it is. Think about many other people in this world, they don't get this privilege at all. Though they want to have a worship, wants to have a fellowship, they don't get it. It is not because of our merit. It is not because of our holy life. It is absolutely because of the grace of the Lord. It is because of the favor of the Lord upon us. So Timothy was a man who lived according to the revelation he received. He was true to the word of God, true to the vision, true to the revelation he received. There was no gap in his word and deed. The people could realize when they were listening that here is really a disciple of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Timothy was urged, Timothy was motivated by Apostle Paul and the team to join them. We know many people in this community everywhere, you know. Very often we don't like some others to join us. Why? Because they don't keep a testimony. There's a reason. But we expect some people to join us. Why? Because we know that those people, they love the Lord earnestly. Good people. They, they, they are passionate. They are loving. They are caring. They, 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 they know the Lord. They experience God. The depth of their heart. There are people like that. Timothy was one among them. Timothy was an example in that particular time. This is my deep prayer from my heart. Let us be an example before others. When they watch over us, let them see that there is an incredible quality in our life. Something has changed us. We are the transformed people in the community where we live. Children, though you don't go to schools and colleges right now in the particular context, but when you are away from the church, away from the parents, away from the siblings, let others see that you are transformed by the power of the gospel. You are different from others. Let others notice an incredible quality in you that is generated by the love of Christ. Let others recognize you as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. In this century, let this be the prayer from our hearts. Lord, I want to be a real disciple of Jesus Christ. Let us come back to this 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. So Paul was so proud. He was so proud to address him as a man of God. Man of God. What a wonderful title it is. Man of God. Look at that. Verse 11. But verse 11, but you men of God, flee from all this, pursue righteousness, fight the good fight. Praise God. What a wonderful thing it is. There, there are three actions which are demanded from us. Never think that we believed in Jesus Christ. So we have become the children of the Lord. We got eternal life. Everything is fine. Or we got baptized in water as an outward sign of our inward chain. Or we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Probably we may speak in tongues. Or we are gifted uh, by the Holy Spirit. So everything is okay. Don't think that. All these are privileges in our life. But that should motivate us to be more responsible as the disciples of Christ. That should inspire us to grow in the Lord. So it is not just being, but becoming. That's a philosophical uh, expression also. There are people, those who love to take hold of this concept, being, being a child of God, being a man of God, being a, a disciple. That's okay, that's good. But do we really become Something that is expected by the Lord. So being and becoming are different. Let us become truly the man of God or the woman of God. So we find here there are actions which are 
demanded from us what are the actions very important during this worship service the lord wants all of us to have our cooperation our involvement our engagement we need to get involved in our faith life good to remember that we are saved by the lord through faith in christ that's wonderful but something more is expected from us we need to become men of god or women of god how can we become that is my uh, topic today how can we become men of god or women of god number 1 flee from certain things verse 11 flee from certain things what are these flee from all this we need to look into several things the preceding passage preceding verses there are several things just i will uh, refer it uh, without having any uh, further explanation okay when you look into verse 4 there we find we should flee from a discontented spirit discontented spirit i'm sorry in verse 4 we find we should flee from conceit okay conceit that means flee from excessive pride in our life are we mindful of that are we serious about it do we take seriously this charge commandment we should flee from conceit excessive pride in our life verse 4 in verse 5 flee from impurity or a discontented spirit in verses 6 to 8 6 6 to 8 a discontented spirit this is very important you know very often we are not content in our life we are not satisfied on things in our life we want more 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 not satisfied with the blessings of the lord this is really a problem in human life that doesn't mean that we should not work hard we should work hard the lord expects us to work earnestly to attain to earn that's okay but we need to we be content in our life are we really content in our life for the blessings we received in a, in in our daily life so this contented spirit is really a problem we find apostle paul mention it in philippians chapter 4 also i have learned the secret of being content in and all the situations what a wonderful verse it is philippians chapter 4 verses 9 and 10 maybe 11 all those verses that talks about that then paul says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me let us be content with what we have this contented spirit is a challenge that hinders our spiritual growth that hinders our relationship with the lord that hinders our spiritual progress let us be content with what we have look at verse uh, verse 9 flee from foolish and harmful lusts lust people are foolish in many areas there are foolish people they take satisfaction with their less full dealings that is sin people are not serious about it there are many people those who are guided by the flesh but we the people of god we those who are cleansed by the precious blood of jesus we need to be guided by the spirit of god this is really a contrast we find this is opposite to that we find this very clearly in romans chapter 8 there are people those who are guided by the flesh those who are guided by the spirit of god where do we move on in our spiritual life how are we be guided in our daily life as the children of the lord let's continue verse 9 talks about foolish and harmful lusts in our life and so verse 10 there we find 
that talks about the love of money love of money is the root of all evil that is to be taken in your consideration very seriously flee from the love of money we all need money we need it. without that we cannot survive in this world that is why we are working hard we all get benefits out of our work you people get it we people get it okay we are paid not out about it we get it we need to get it but the bible clearly talks about this danger even spiritually minded people religious minded people the people those who hold this bible and preach there are many greedy people in our community everywhere all over the world apostle paul in the first century itself talks about this danger in the life looks unto that this is really a problem verse 10 for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil verse 10 continues some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs is it not true that's true we come across many people you know some the people do they want to become rich so fastly they always compare their life with others if if a neighbor maybe a spiritual or a church member if a neighbor buy a new home maybe a big size a large size building then we all we may get a feeling that we also should have a large house like that compare with others we want to become like other man or other woman that's a, that's really a, a danger you know spirit of competition still no other we need not have that we should not have that there are many people those who fall in trap it is very beautifully translated in malayalam also in english we find there are many people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs people look for shortcuts to become more rich the lord doesn't expect us to find out shortcuts to become rich people like others in the community the lord out of his for knowledge or let me use the word the lord is omniscient he knows everything the lord has the best knowledge about our life that means he knows what to give us how to give us when to give us that doesn't mean that we should be idle in our community we should not do anything we should have our own attempt our own initiative our own effort everything is okay but trust in god who knows everything about our life he sees the end from the beginning he's almighty he's omniscient he knows everything out of his best knowledge he will supply all our needs on time how many of you believe that he will supply all our needs on time he knows when to give what to give the lord is so gracious so faithful praise the lord my father was a pastor now he is with the lord my mother is still alive she turned to 94 and also dear your your pastor pastor sam's parents sister prince's parents they all have been in the ministry trusted in god had faith in god prayed earnestly for every blessings from the lord i am sure that many of you those who are in that church over that congregation they all experience god's wonderful provisions in our life god is faithful let me tell you so flee from all this we need to flee from evil things we need to realize things which are evil they are really hinders our spiritual progress in life <clears throat> many are ignorant or they uh, think that 
everything is okay in their life never think that everything is not okay we are the people to be transformed on our daily basis that is the purpose for which we have sunday worship service prayer meetings fasting prayer and also we have sunday school for the kids youth meetings for the youth all these are arranged that the people should become men of god and women of god there should be clear spiritual progress in our life <clears throat> we should be able to flee from evil things in our life is that all enough that knowledge that, that knowledge alone no action to flee that's good but the second stage follow certain things in the niv translation we find the niv version it is pursue on the one side we flee from several things at the same time we pursue certain things what are the things number one righteousness righteousness is it possible for us to pursue righteousness we read the scripture that jesus christ is our righteousness in the old testament there were many people those who tried to follow righteousness and also to carry out righteous acts but they could not please god they failed in it that is why god the father sent his son jesus christ to die on the cross of calvary and out of his righteousness the righteous act we receive the righteousness it is because of jesus we have the righteousness the righteousness of god is imputed in our hearts through faith in the lord do you understand that we cannot have our own righteousness but we have righteousness because the righteousness of god is imputed through christ when we have faith in the lord <clears throat> so we can pursue righteousness but we are the word righteousness that means we can do right in relation with god and men both that means doing justice doing justice before god and men doing a right in relation with god and men praise the lord one example very familiar with us we find in the gospel of luke chapter 19 that talks about sacchaeus he was on the tree with a curiosity to see jesus but jesus was going there along with the disciples looked up and called sacchaeus come down if we are really curious of seeing jesus we will get a chance to see him today even this worship service there may be many things that hinders our hearts or mind to see jesus but keep up this curiosity earnestly and wait upon the lord as one of you testified all those who look unto god are radiant and they will never be ashamed that's a basic test in my life too very often pastors they quote the scripture in prayer or in their messages Sakis was a man who had many hindrances he was a short man there was a multitude all those were hindrances but he could overcome all those hindrances because of his eagerness to see jesus never leave a worship service without beholding the beauty and glory of our lord jesus christ do we have that passion in our heart today if that is the case let us pursue righteousness sacchaeus came down and we find he made a confession he was ready to carry out what jesus admonished him commanded him to do he was obedient to that he was ready the readiness is more important surrender total surrender that submission to the word of god he was ready to carry out certain things he was ready we find it he was ready for a righteous act let righteous acts be the evidence of our repentance it is not just lifting your hands 
up and say that yes i accept jesus christ as the lord and savior but at the same time that includes opening our heart opening uh, what role we have in our life to share with others we are a community sharing and caring in the uh, society when people are in need what a wonderful time we all do it i praise god for all of you all the churches all over the world contributing helping people those who are in need sharing what we have with others pursue righteousness do the righteous acts in the community pursue godliness we find again godliness that speaks of our attitudes and motives praise god so pure let our attitudes and motives be very pure in our daily life godliness that is very important there are ungodly people in this world at the same time godly people ungodliness means there are people those who never realize who god is and they will never respond to his attributes you get my point there are people some people may know god who he is but they will never respond to that how do we respond to god thankful to him praising him worshiping him what a what a wonderful experience it is godly people know how to respond to god ungodly people they will never respond to god <clears throat> we find in this great country this is an election year and after a few days we are going to have that many people have already cast their 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 mandate millions of people already cast their votes i encourage all of those citizens of this country over there i am not a citizen all the citizens part of the congregation that to cast your votes but keep one thing in your mind pray earnestly look unto god and pray god raise a leader who is godly who can give right direction for this country the country may come back to the bible the people may know that's a real god who came down through jesus christ as the savior of, of the world for the sins of the people a leader who is godly to encourage people to trust in living god jesus christ is the way the truth and the life only through jesus we can have access unto the holy god a godly leader who turns unto the living god in times of crisis emphasize the need of prayer and faith in god who is godly and ungodly i encourage all the teenagers youngsters in that congregation who do listen to me we should be able to discern what is godliness and what is ungodliness what is right and what is wrong what is pleasing to god and what is not pleasing to god godliness is very important let me continue with that so we need to pursue righteousness then we need to pursue godliness what is godliness a quality in our heart attitude and behavior in us to respond to the living god we know how to respond to the living god we cannot keep away from faith we cannot keep away from prayer from the church from the worship from contributing to the lord for from giving our tithe or our contribution things which are connected with godliness leading a holy life we are sober minded self control disciplined in our life disciplined according to the standard of the bible godly people godliness is important then pursue thirdly pursue faith faith that means what is faith in our life we have a definition in hebrews chapter 11 children you know they used to uh, uh, learn it by heart 
if i ask a question they will definitely say that that from uh, hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 what is faith so let me just paraphrase it and say faith is confident trust in god confident trust in god for everything for everything do we have a confident trust in god for everything in our life or only we trust god when we come together as a community of faith and worship if things are favorable we trust god is it that case no even in crisis what we do we have faith please look into that f a i t h keep that in your mind f a i t h praise god f forwarding a all i for issues forwarding all issues t to h heaven forwarding all issues to heaven sorry that i, I haven't prepared powerpoints for you bear with me okay so faith forwarding all issues to heaven even in this pandemic situation things go in a different way than what you have expected things which are not favorable even in such a crisis in times of difficulties and struggles in our life we should pursue faith means it is forwarding all issues to heaven some of you may have physical problems some others may have emotional struggles in your life and many of you may be concerned of your generation some of you young, young generation may be anxious of your job some kinds of layoffs or anything in your life this is the commandment from the lord today have faith pursue faith means forward all issues to heaven when we do this we become the men of god and women of god there is no shortcut to become men of god or women of god we have to move on get along we have to get involved in this action christian life is action oriented to be dynamic in our life to attain many things in your life how zealous you are is it not you work hard is it not to attain many things if that is significant important for your earthly life is it not important in your spiritual life to become men of god let us be zealous committed disciplined vigilant let us be alert to become men and women of god in these days flee from many things and follow or pursue several things so next one is pursue love in our life what is love that is radical love when i say radical love I mean that is not you know having a smile at others and expressing our love let others think that i love you through my smiling face there are many people who are excellent in that excellent is smiling at others and express their love all may not have all may not be sincere in that that's very true i have come across many people you know even i got confused we all got we all get confused in our life many are not sincere but let us have a sincere love what is a sincere love we call it we, when, what do you call it we call it agape agape love that means agape love means expecting the highest good of others highest good of others we all expect the highest good in our life is it not so also expect the highest good of others is it possible children of the lord if you want to become men of god we should keep up such a standard in our life such a quality let us expect the best in the lives of others then we can smile at others sincerely 
we can worship along with others sincerely god is pleased in our act of love okay love others and expect nothing in return do your help to others expect nothing in return when we when you love others don't think that they should love you as you expect no don't give that don't don't expect that expect nothing in return pour out our hearts love sincerely help the people there are many many references this sincere love is poured in our hearts by the holy spirit romans chapter 5 verse 5 Philemon, Philemon chapter verse seven. There also Apostle Paul says, "Oh Philemon, I expect something great from you. That will definitely refresh my heart. That kind of wonderful thing." Okay, so pursue agape love. Let us continue with that. There we find again. Praise God. Endurance. pursue endurance <clears throat> what is endurance the word endurance means that is steadfastness that means unwavering loyalty unwavering loyalty to god and his ways we will not waver in our life we are steadfast we will not be moved whatever takes place in our life remain strong in any context there are many references we find in james chapter 1 verses 2 and 3 okay so steadfast so our faith results in steadfastness then again we find pursue uh, then next one is gentleness what a wonderful quality it is we find the fruit of the spirit in galatians chapter 5 there we find the same here also gentleness what is the meaning of the word gentleness that means we are tamed in such a way from a rough character we are tamed we all know about wild animals many of you almost all of you or many of you are from kerala or in other states of the india also we find you know we we could find elephants wild ones at the same time wild elephants were tamed for a period of time and they were used for a different purpose for a better purpose in a community you know we, we have seen a short man 5 feet is taking this elephant big in size that elephant is very obedient why because that elephant is tamed you know this is true with our christian life we all have been very rough and tough in our life but because of the power of the gospel because of the uh, power of the holy spirit you know we are disciplined we are being disciplined we are tamed in such a way uh, that our our lives are used for the master we know whom we are serving we are serving our lord jesus christ we are the people of the lord we are transformed in such a way that our master can use us as he desires in our life philippians chapter 4 uh, verse 5 read let your gentleness be evident to all because the lord comes soon that talks about the imminent return of jesus when we remember the imminent return of jesus that may take place any time when we think about our lord comes back keep this in your mind let the gentleness in our life be evident to all pursue all these qualities third one fight a good fight of faith this is not talking about the battlefield but that that talks about the life of an athlete athlete run the race when we run the race praise the lord how should we be fight the good fight let me close my message by quoting uh, a verse in the scripture 
we read in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. There, in the initial verses, that reminds us the fact that we need to discipline our life. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him he endured the cross, scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Dear people of God, let us not be weary and lose our heart. Instead, let us have a consistent race in our life. As we read in the scripture, let us run with perseverance. Praise the Lord. Let us run the race with perseverance marked out for us. We need to reach a destiny. How many of you believe? How many of you believe that we need to run with consistency in our life? Consistency in our life. Oh, people of God, we are a transformed community. The Lord wants all of us to become men and women of God, free from evil things, pursue wonderful qualities and fight a good fight of faith and let us hold on, take hold the eternal life in our life. One day we will experience the abundance of life. When we meet the Lord Jesus in the air, that is going to take place in the nearest future. The greatest event that will take place, that will be the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. All those who believe and trust in the second coming of the Lord, let me say and confess with our mouth that we need to forward all issues to heaven and look up, fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. We will be with him for ever and ever. Maranatha, the Lord is going to come us. So let us become men and women of God. Flee, follow, and pursue. Then we will be able to take hold of the eternal life. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.